Okay, uh, let's get started. Uh, thanks for the organizers for inviting me. Um, I have a proposal regarding a single cell gene expression ontology. Um, I, at this point, work at the Vienna Biocenter and more specifically at the Max Peretz Laboratories. Um, we go to the next. Okay. Uh, so what is single uh, cell RNA seq because uh, or RNA sequencing because not everybody might be aware of that. It's RNA is being isolated from a single cell, so you would not uh, grind up tissues or use uh, whole organs. Um, then you reverse transcribe the RNA, you tag the RNA, you amplify it, and then you sequence it uh, in, in a single cell basis. Um, there exist several methods and strategies, uh, for example, from 10x genomics, then there is a method called SmartSeq, Flitigym has a methodology to do that, and so on. And all of these methods generate gene expression profiles between dozens and thousands of genes f for, again, between dozens or thousands of cells, so you have enormous amounts of data. The quality of the results varies, so some methods produce really reliable and good results, others uh, less. And yeah, you end up with an enormous amount of data, uh, as well as uh, on the raw sequencing and, and then also with the, with the process data and the evaluate data. And so how will we be able to make efficient use of all the data? Um, that's the question I like to answer with the with this ontology. So essentially, what it looks like, so you you end up with with this mouse ontology. You end up with this enormous amount of just for one organ. You see there are up to 32 cell types, and if you do a T SNE, a T stochastic, a T distributed stochastic a neighborhood embedding, you will end up with all these different with all these different uh, cell types and they're all clustered together and that's basically the only way to uh, discern uh, those uh, those cell types by uh, doing a similarity analysis or in that, in that sense um, unsupervised learning to discern all these cell types. If we didn't know that those are different cell types by uh, marking them somehow with surface receptors we wouldn't, we wouldn't know anything about them except their description profile. So, uh, and how to organize all the knowledge, uh, that's, I think, one of the things we want to uh, do with uh, this ontology. And Also, you can see that uh, with, a different, uh, with a different organ, kidney, there is a lot, a lot of cell types, but it's, again, it's different cell types and, uh, again, very diverse. So, you, again, have about 30 different cell types with a uh, this time is different cell types. Okay, why do a single cell gene expression ontology? So the OO universe doesn't seem to have such an ontology. Um, the single cell RNA seq raw data can be found in the gene expression um, omnibus by NIH, uh, and pre processed data is usually uh, spread over either the, the supplementary or the uh, or some specific project websites uh, for, for each paper which comes out and that's not very easy to reuse um, and it's also not standardized and it's also not comprehensive and it's hard to make quick use of the data if you have a problem you need to do a lot of pre-processing in order to get done to make use of the data so what could we gain with a single cell ontology we want to query over all a single cell RNA data seq in best case so questions about gene expression in certain cell types, in certain tissues, in certain organs can be asked. Uh, quality control, reliab the, reliab the reliability of uh, single cell seq is sometimes challenging, and single cell ontology could provide some quick query-based um, quality metrics and quality checks. And single cell ontology could be used for imputation of missing values because that's a common problem that you have uh, a bunch of measurements for your genes in your RNA seq, uh, but you just lack some values and you could impute them. Um, and single cell ontology uh, could be used to, uh, for example, query for drug targets in certain tissue types, which you are at this point not really uh, able to do with uh, conventional methods and conventional RNA seq. 
So what could it look like? So we would start out, for example, with a tissue organ, which is the yellow box, and then you can say, okay, um, we have um, mm -hmm. these are determined by Uberon ontology because the idea would be reuse as many concepts from the Uber universe as possible, and these would uh, contain cells, uh, cells or precursors, and the precursors would be um, would be uh, has pre relationships like has precursor and has descendant, and the tissue organ would has part uh, cell or, uh, or precursor. We we're not sure because sometimes they have precursors, sometimes they don't. Uh, in the same organ or tissue. Um, and yeah, then you have a bunch of other relationships, like for example, has protein expressed, has uh, certain uh, RNA values expressed, and then um, has function which could come from the gene ontology, and has neighbor because some of these data sets know uh, can determine what the neighboring cells are. So you could, for example, determine neighboring cell types. So that's just a quick proposal, um, how it could look, what it could look like, and that's, I think, something which needs to be uh, fleshed out a little more. But in principle, that's a basic idea and a basic structure, what we want to work on. Okay. Okay. What should be accomplished during biohackathon? So um, the draft the basic uh, layout and ontology, then implement the ontology in a Stanford protege, and then reuse as many existing concepts from the OVO universe, like from Uber on Go, cell ontology, and so on. Um, and then we would like to use uh, this drafted ontology to set, set up a Sparkle endpoint and import two, da two data sets. So one is this mouse single cell atlas, which has been published uh, this year. And there is also a nice paper about the human tumor infiltrating T cell landscape uh, from last year, a very nice data set, which uh, is of really high interest. And yeah, then we hope to get to draft some fancy examples, marker queries, and then certainly put it on GitHub and uh, under CC0, so we met the FAIR data principles. Um, yeah, there are certainly some issues of roadblocks. So the data produced by different um, single cell RNA seq methods are heterogeneous regarding gene coverage, quality, and uh, cost, but yeah, that's not. And it makes it more challenging to unify and normalize the different data sets. And so, but overall, this issue is to be expected to resolve over time. And essentially, there are lots of single cell RNA seq data sets out there. Um, collecting them and integrating them in a comprehensive fashion would be a gigantic task. So, for now, we focus on, uh, on just a few data sets, which is more realistic than trying to cover everything at once. But it's certainly something you could iterate on and let it grow over time. Okay, um, yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks for the Biohacker 2018 organizers uh, to invite for the invitation. And also thanks to my new lab in Vienna uh, and Professor Arndt von Hazler. And they only let me come here if I promise that I bring back a lot of sake. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.